What is up guys? Welcome to a brand new video. Today we're going to look at this support misfortune pick that everybody is playing right now. Some are feeding, some are carrying. To be honest, I didn't really want to make the video about it, but a lot of people have the wrong idea about why it was picked, like what it's good at. And so after this video, if you actually want to play it, you're going to know how to use it properly. I don't do many specific guides anymore, honestly. So if you enjoy this, then let me know in the comments and throw the video a like to let me know that you want me to do more of them. So the first thing, this is supposed to be a pocket pick counter to support Zyra. This is also not something brand Brand new. This has been done a ton in Korean solo queue and even at high low in NA and EU. It's not something you really play like every game though and that is kind of why I want to go over it. So what about the why first? Like really getting close to Zyra is a death sentence. Like Misfortune doesn't have to and it really keeps her away as well. It keeps Zyra away. You have the zone from Make It Rain. That is one of the biggest things. It forces Zyra to stand back and not come close. It means she can't poke you and she can't like bully your AD carry as easily. Your ultimate is a lot of damage out of range of Zyra which is 100% like her weakness. Your love tap increased damage auto makes short work of her plants so you can get rid of them quite quick her Q can actually also bounce off a plant onto the champion behind so the, her own plants can kind of work against her that is like the support Zyra matchup I guess but in general Misfortune has good base damage it means she doesn't really necessarily need AD to do damage she just can do damage with ranks of her abilities she has decent poke and lane control from her make it range high range as well but does AoE ultimate with a lot of damage and the black cleaver is another thing this is one thing I don't agree with how Gorilla played it he rushed the last whisper and then got Black Cleaver afterwards. I think Black Cleaver is like your first big item. The armor shred for the rest of her team to do way more damage. So that's why it works in a nutshell. Good skill set, higher range, good base damage, and you don't really need items or gold to do your job. So when is it really overpowered though? When do you actually want to pick this and when are you actually going to crush games with it? It's not really something for every game, as I just said. It's against low health or close range things. Things that need to be close to do damage. Basically, you want to outrange them. You want to poke with make it rain and your Q. It actually gives a good amount of lane pressure and damage as long as they cannot all in and fight you. Also pick this with crowd control, okay? This is the biggest point in this video. It does not work with every single AD carry, not properly at least. Maybe you can play this with like a vein or something and you might win the game, but it's not really going to be top tier. At level 6, she wants her AD to lock them down with some crowd control so she can just ult the target. That target won't be able to get out of it and that is a ton of damage over those couple of seconds while Misfortune is ulting. This is why Ash and Jin are the two best here. Ash arrow into Misfortune ult, that is what happened in the world's finals. Both of the games where Misfortune was played was with an Ash for the exact reason. With no crowd control, your ultimate is not worth as much at all. And that's something you have to kind of bear in mind if you're really trying to climb with it. Jin actually is also extremely good. This is one we haven't seen yet, but Make It Rain can proc Jin's W, a route into Misfortune ult, and then Jin ultimate to snipe them. That is actually a massive amount of damage from very far away, and there's nothing they can really do about it. Like, if they get hit by the Jin W, the rest of it is kind of just like game over. It's a very heavy poke lane, actually. You get ahead and you will ruin people, and those are going to be the two best AD in my opinion. There are some others I would suggest as well, though Varus is one of them. The Q poke actually adds up with Misfortune poke, so that is the first thing. Second thing is your ultimate route into Misfortune route is kind of similar to how Ash works, and that is another reason why I think this lane is actually very deadly, even though Varus isn't played very much. Kaylin, you can kind of trap into Misfortune ult. It's some crowd control. It's not the best because they actually have to step on a trap, which is kind of up to them to be a dumbass, but it doesn't last too long. It can work though. Jinx is another one that's a bit of a stretch, but Chompers into Misfortune ult also works. This one is harder because Jinx can't can't redo as much by herself, but she can still work. Like, she's kind of close range. She has to auto attack to do damage. Now, if you're picking this with other AD carries, as I said before, then sure, it might work. You might win, but that doesn't mean it's actually a really good lane. You're not abusing the synergy that makes this a really strong choice. Also, it is way, way better when you're ahead than behind. Like, if you get ahead, it's just more AoE damage than the enemy team can really deal with, I guess. If your team gets super behind, though, then your ultimate won't really deal a whole ton, and they'll just be running at you, so you'll have to cancel it and run away, or you're just gonna die. You don't really offer much utility either unless you build for it you offer damage and in most games that is better used when you have a lead when your entire team is ahead now if you're playing against Mint's fortune i know a lot of people will want that from this video as well the easiest ways to beat her are to punish her early game it's actually not very good if you gank her a lot or just fight her and go all in when i make it rain is on cooldown that's probably the best time like that is most of her damage in the lane phase and it's poke she doesn't really provide much in an all-in fight i guess that's my point like 2v2 or something like that over time she will do but actually just in a 2v2 she's not really going to be able to do too much anyway let's go into the actual guide part. So now you're going to know how you're supposed to play Misfortune. It's going to be about the runes, items, masteries, and all of that stuff next. These are what Gorilla use at Worlds, by the way. I've gone into the match history of the Worlds games, and you can have a look at that. I'll put a link down below if you want to see it yourself. But feel free to swap things around in and out if you want to, but they do make sense, and they obviously do a good job if you want two games with it. So for runes, hybrid pen reds with armor and magic pen together. Health are yellows and AP blues, two armor quints, and one AP quint. So what about the Y part of this, though? Because actually, 
kind of seems a bit weird. I guess hybrid pen marks to start with. Most of MS damage is actually hybrid. You're going to use the AP damage early from a make it rain and slowly move into AD with your ultimate later. This kind of covers both bases really. If you just got magic pen, you do more in the laner phase, but less later. Just armor pen, you wouldn't do as much in the laner phase, but you do more later. So it's kind of like a mix in the middle. With the health yellows, normally people are armor, I guess, but you should really be in ranged auto as much. You're more about the zone and poke from far away. With the AP on the blues, you're kind of an early pick. Like Misfortune is an early game pick and AP gives more damage with make it rain. You're not really a tank either. You shouldn't be taking too much damage. With the quints, two armor quints is actually almost the same to nine armor yellows, by the way. So even though we've got health and the yellows right now, we're not actually losing that armor. And again, AP for the single one for the early damage. Masteries are going to be 0, 18, 12. So Thunderlords, more burst, more poke from make it rain. Also, you're not stacking AD. So death by touch is not really as good as a normal AD carry misfortune. It's pretty basic stuff, really. More cooldown reduction, more gold, more random regen. Resolve is a bit odd, though, actually. Like, but designed for more utility stuff, really, I guess, for pro play. You could easily go Ferocity if you want to be more aggressive in solo queue. In fact, actually, I'd probably suggest going 12, 18 for our games, like our pleb games. Skill max is going to be E, W, Q, by the way. So no real surprise, honestly. E is your main damage tool for AP, MF early. W is more mobility and attack speed for later. And your Q is a hide the base damage anyway from rank 1 if it crits. But you're not really using it that much with this build. So for items, you're going to start with Spell Thieves. And that means your poke is now going to give you gold. It also gives you AP. And Gorilla upgraded to Frost Fang and then got his Sight Stone afterwards. Then into Eye of the Watchers and Boost of Swiftness to round out our first items. You're going to get a lot of gold from Frost Fang and just make it rain. Plus early damage is AP, remember. So that is why we're getting AP first. As we just said, AP is early. Now we're moving into AD for our ultimate, which is the, basically all of our damage late game. And so the double arm pen to make that ultimate base damage hurt as much as possible. Black Cleaver first. Please get Black Cleaver first. Okay, Gorilla went last Whisper first and it hurts. Like there's no point in doing that. Percentage arm pen is better as the game gets later, not early. Black Cleaver increases your entire team's damage as well with the stacks. So it's actually much, much better. Not only are you going to be doing good damage, but your entire team will be doing more damage as well. And it does provide more utility. Last Whisper after is actually fine to get through even more armor. You're not stacking enough AD or crit to build for those, to be honest. So you want to use your high base damage. Now to round out this build, because actually we didn't get that far in the world. So I think honestly, Rylai's and Leandries gives you some utility with Make It Rain. The slows and it burns as well. This sounds really weird because we're going back to AP as well and going proper hybrid misfortune, but it's actually super annoying to play against and can have a bigger impact than just your damage. In a team fight, if you put that E down, it's actually very hard to get through. And I think that gives you even more utility, not just your ultimate. It kind of rounds out your kid a little bit. More Mamortius is probably going to be one of the most common options. It's AD, shield to survive, so more ultimate damage overall, I guess. It's basically as close to a defensive item as you're going to want to get because it gives you damage and defense. You don't really want to go like randoins or lock it or anything else. So Misfortune is not that kind of pick. Infinity Edge is another one. It kind of sucks because you have no other crit in here, but your ultimate ways can actually crit. So it's an insane amount of damage if you get lucky. You might want to add some attack speed in there as well for even more crit if you do, but it is kind of wasted because your auto attacks aren't really what this build is about. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't normally do guides anymore, so let me know what you think. But thank you for watching, and for now, let's go to the robots.